My full name is Jonathan Kent Adams, and my mom wanted to call me Nathan. I came to school here at Ole Miss, and I got my undergrad, got a BFA in painting. I finally realized that it was going to be a big part of my identity, and like it was the way I was going to shape my life, like for my future. I came out, I think, my sophomore year of college. I mean, I had known for, I mean, since I was young mm -hmm. that I was attracted to guys, but I wasn't like verbal about it to anyone really until my sophomore year. I think around junior high, God came to me as a safe place and like a place I could escape and a place that, I don't know, that really changed my life and shaped who I was in that point in my life. And I mean, that just stuck with me. To use the halos for me, I think I had a lot of people that saw my work and I was at first painting a lot of self-portraits. And so, I mean, it was obvious that what I was painting was about me. But a lot of people that had opinions about my work that I respected kept wanting me to like stop painting myself so much, which I still do sometimes, but not all of my work is of me now. And so like the halos and stuff became a way for me to keep myself there and keep things that I was dealing with like a part of the pieces because I wanted queer people or really anyone that's different to be seen as someone that could be holy or could have a spiritual life. And so I started to put them into the work to kind of represent that and I don't know, just show that their, their lives were worthy, like their lives could be seen as something to be looked up to. Um, and I mean, if anything, like you might like, see the painting and not even know that it's a gay person, you know, but you just like know because of like history and art history that like that symbolizes like someone that is spiritual or someone who, you know, has that type of life. In the heart, well, in the Bible, like when you start a relationship with God, you get a new heart and for me I always loved that I don't I don't really know why but I just thought it was cool that it's like you realize like you can't do everything by yourself or you don't know everything by yourself or that you need help from outside of yourself occasionally like I liked that transfer of like your own like what you started with wasn't enough and so something new like comes in I liked that a lot and so it shows up too. And I also like how like we all have hearts that are similar, you know, like beneath like our skin, we look pretty similar, the blood and the anatomy of like the heart. Well, I think I was just really initially really upset about the Orlando shooting. And I wanted to do something and didn't really know what it was gonna be. Then I was like, I need to make paintings <laughs> of every person. And so I went and bought some like wooden panels from Walmart and I was like, Nathan, you paint people and it takes forever. So I just went and bought watercolor papers and I used my ink and acrylic. And I was like, I'm just gonna draw sketches of the victims and give them halos like to honor them. And for me, it was like healing for me and it seemed to be healing for other people, like the people that commented that might have known them and for people to get to know them because I would go and look up their names, look on their Facebook and kind of gather information. And it was a way of not becoming numb, like to injustice because I mean, I was having to revisit it over and over again. And I think that was hard, but it was also like just part of what we're dealing with now. You can be angry, you can be happy, you can be sad, but it's your way of letting that go into the world. And I really love that. And I think that's why people connect to art is because when they see themselves like in those things, something they're struggling with, something they're celebrating, like I think that's why art has never like died throughout history is because we see each other like in these things we're creating, music, paintings, stories.